Hello to everyone out there in the internet. Today I am recording from beautiful Mexico City, Mexico, at house sit number nine, but the topic of today's video is going back to house sit number seven. The location of house sit seven was back in San Andres, Huayapam, in Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, you've probably gotten accustomed to hearing that name by now as we've had a total of four house sits in Huayapam which is a small village, one of our very favorite places in Mexico so far. Um, house sits three, four, seven, and eight were all in San Andres, Huayapam. Um, so that has become a familiar place to us. The duration of this house sit was seven weeks, and this is one that was not booked via either the uh, Facebook group, House and Pet Sitting Mexico, or the website housesitmexico.com. This one is the first one that we were invited back by our hosts. Um, so we were back at the same place as house sit number three um, with two dogs, Beanie and Pelu. And like always, this was a uh, no money exchange compensation. Um, so we were trading our time taking care of the animals and house in exchange for a place to stay and utilities while their owners were away. Jumping into the perks of this house sit, it is a cute, comfortable house with all the amenities that we could need. Also, uh, of course, we were happy for the opportunity to go back to one of our favorite places in Mexico and enjoy uh, village life for another seven weeks. And being that it is seven weeks, um, that's one of our longest house sits. Um, so of course we enjoy the longer house sits, the better, um, the more opportunity to really feel what it's like to live in a location. And seven weeks is a, is a really good time, um, especially because we'd already been in Wyopham um, for two house sits previously. Uh, seven weeks here, really gave us an opportunity to um, solidify friendships with the hosts as we were in a lot of contact um, via text messaging, um, but also solidifying friendships with people in the village, um, some people that we had met previously, we went out to lunch with a few times and they invited us over to their house for a, a Thanksgiving meal. Um, so it was really just a a comfortable, good length of time to be back in Wyopam. Also, um, another benefit of having the seven weeks in one place, it worked out very well because during that time period, uh, it was when our temporary residency came up for its first renewal. So when we moved to Mexico just over a year ago, um, we completed the process to receive temporary residency for one year, which is uh, the maximum amount that you can get the first time that you apply for residency. Then at, uh, at the one year mark it comes renewal time and we were able to complete that whole process. Uh, we received three more years of temporary residency in Mexico and we were able to go through the process of extending our cars temporary import permit. And that was, um, you know, it was a little stressful, just a lot of paperwork and, um, you know, not completely certain of all the steps that would be required. So because of that only, it was um, a little bit stressful. It's just mostly time consuming. It was a number of days being at the office and then um, you have to be in, in one location. You can't be traveling and pick up your card at a different office or something. So uh, once you, you have to start and end the renewal process in the same location, so being in Wyopam for seven weeks during that time period was uh, perfect for us. Of course, another perk for being in Wyopam and Oaxaca during this time period is that we were able to experience our first Dia de Muertos in Mexico. Um, and Oaxaca is one of the parts of Mexico where it is the most involved. Um, so that was a a wonderful experience. I don't plan to do a whole video on that because I feel like being foreigners and having only experienced it one time, it would be like if we had made a video about Mardi Gras 
the year that we moved to New Orleans. I'm not saying that Dia de Muertos and Mardi Gras are the same thing, but um, it, being that we're so new to this tradition, I don't intend to make a, a video about it. However, I did write a pretty lengthy blog post about our experience as as foreigners and um, having this be our first uh, Muertos experience. I took a lot of photos, um, so please feel free to go to the Benton Homestead blog and check out our blog post about our first experience with Dia de Muertos. Um, and hopefully you'll like some of the photos there. Moving on to the responsibilities of this house sit, of course, you know, basic necessities, food, water, treats, and walks. I'm going to jump into some photos here so I can show you uh, how we took care of Beanie and Pelu's two raw food meals a day. The first time we house sat for Beanie and Pelu, our hosts went through a lot of trouble to make sure that um, we had enough containers of frozen raw meat for them to last the entire duration of the house sit. They had filled their entire freezer and they had um, stashed some at some friends. So we had some side quests to go uh, collect food from uh, freezers around the village and um, bring them back when we were getting low. And while that worked out really well, it was a whole lot of work for them to do that ahead of time. And after having done the raw food diet for them and also having done you know different different um, special dietary needs for other house sit dogs. Um, we just decided this time, since we were coming back and are comfortable with Beanie and Pelu, that um, we would just, we could hand, they didn't need to fill their freezer and various other freezers with food for us. Um, so the added responsibility of this house sit was um, for the two raw meals a day, uh, every three weeks or so, they get, um, a delivery like this. It comes in a tote here uh, from fresh from the market and we receive the fresh meat, uh, go through and, and rinse it and um, slice it into pieces here and then sort the pieces into the containers um, which will go in the freezer until it's time to eat. So as we were um, putting the bits into the containers, each one needs a variety of um, bony pieces, meaty pieces, and the different um, types of meat. Uh, there's beef part, it's mostly pieces of chicken, and also uh, a few organ meat bits. So we would, um, just disperse them evenly throughout the buckets there and then pop those in the freezer. And since we were there for seven weeks and each delivery lasts about three weeks, uh, we did this two times during our house sit. Of course, other responsibilities included um, just basic things like entertainment and playing, uh, especially with Beanie, who's really into playing fetch. Um, she has a whole basket of toys and Every morning she gets up and just digs all the way down to the bottom to find whatever specific toy she has in mind is going to be the toy for the day. Um, and of course they both get uh, two walks a day, morning and evening. Um, I covered the dog walks uh, fairly extensively in a previous video from the first time we stayed with Beanie and Pelu about dog walking in Mexico and how it differs um, from what a lot of us are probably used to if we have walked dogs in other parts of the world due to the um, street dogs, the outdoor pets, and in Wyapam, specifically uh, the livestock that you could encounter, which um, are usually escorted by a shepherd, but um, once in a while they were known um, to get out. So it's just a matter of being able to know how the dogs you're walking are going to respond and then to be able to respond to um, whatever comes into your path as you turn the corner and there is a small flock of sheep.
And I would say the most time consuming responsibility for this house sit was uh, dog health. Uh, Pelu had um, an illness a while back, and so she's on daily homeopathy, which the homeopathy itself is not um, time consuming. Pelu is uh, very well trained. Um, as soon as you get the little syringe of water, she goes to her bed and, and rolls over, and she knows that her head needs to be down so you can put it on her gums. Um, so that was no problem. That's just once a day. Um, however, about three weeks into the sit, Pelu got a tummy ache, and um, it sort of triggered a uh, uh, going back to her illness uh, that she had had previously. So she got a tummy ache. We could tell she wasn't feeling well. Um, she came up and was just asking for cuddles, which was a little bit unlike her for us. Um, she wasn't standoffish, but she was um, definitely not cuddly with us. And I noticed that, you know, you could hear her tummy gurgling. And um, so we figured out she's not feeling well. Well, the next morning she stopped eating and she wouldn't eat breakfast, which of course is rare. Um, they're very food motivated dogs. And um, in talking with our uh, hosts, who of course were very, very good about communicating and giving us ideas for what to do to get her past this, um, they said that the, the not eating is nothing that's new for her, that's what she does. Um, so when she doesn't feel good, she just sort of reverts to the state of not eating. Um, but it was scary for us because it lasted a week. She didn't eat for a week. And um, we got a little bit in, uh, downer um, after a few days of her not eating. But, um, you know, we were talking with our hosts and coming up with ideas and we we're trying everything. You know, they're on the special diet. So we um, were very careful about uh, making sure whatever we tried to feed her was okay with the hosts beforehand. Um, we tried all kinds of things. Um, she doesn't always like the pumpkin on her food, so we tried giving her meals without pumpkin. Um, she really likes the bony bits of chicken, so we tried giving her extra small cuts of bony chicken. Um, after that didn't work, uh, we tried putting some extra, like, the, the juice from the containers, the meat juice, and some uh, hot water um, is one idea that the hosts said she typically likes. Um, we tried cooking her chicken and giving that to her, and we tried cans of tuna, and they even, um, from their vacation, they ordered and had delivered um, some special cans of salmon. And all of that worked like Sometimes we could get her to take a couple of bites and then she just, I mean, in every way except for eating, she was totally fine. She was acting happy. She was going on walks. She was just pr pretty much her complete normal self. She just was not eating food and she would sniff it. Sometimes she would even put it in her mouth and, you know, I just, I want to make it clear that she wasn't like laying there lethargic, just like not eating. She was like 100% normal, except she just wasn't eating food. Um, so it was a very strange experience. I'd never had an animal do that. And I would have been a lot more freaked out if we hadn't had um, the host just in such constant contact with us and saying, don't worry, this is normal. You know, I'd give them a report uh, once or twice a day about um, how she was doing. And, you know, they'd always respond immediately and say, you know, okay, we wouldn't be doing anything differently if we were there. Um, and we did take her to the vet. They had um, arranged, uh, there's a, a vet in the village very close by, and they had um, told her ahead of time that, that we would be there in case anything happened. Um, so we did take her to the vet, and the vet said she was fine also. Um, she didn't have a fever, and um, the uh, one really good thing that came from that is uh, that she recommended a can of dog food that is for um, like malnourished dogs and dogs that like need 
dogs that aren't eating. It's just uh, specifically designed to be something that they can't resist. And um, so we put a little bit of that and um, covered it over her uh, favorite bony chicken bits. And um, she that worked immediately. She just like wolfed it down. And then after that point, that was a week into it. Then after that, there was maybe another week where she was eating like 60% of the time. So she'd be eating a couple good meals, um, just her normal raw chicken meals. And then um, she would just not eat one. So we'd have to put some of that dog food um, back on there or we'd uh, try the tuna or um, sardines. They would get sardines too. And um, so after the week of totally being scared and then a week of just like getting back to normal and sort of bouncing up and down, after that she was fine. So if you've made it this far, thanks for listening. I really try with these videos to just keep things real and honest and not sugarcoat things and um, let you know the, the realities, the good and the bad and the sometimes scary of uh, house sitting and taking care of people's pets and how much of a responsibility it is. Um, the other thing that made Pelu's situation um, a little bit more stressful is because it was happening at the same time as our residency renewal that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Um, so that was about the same week, week and a half that um, we were dealing with the, the immigration and then um, also with Pelu. So it was just a little bit of a scary time. But we're happy to say that everything worked out perfectly fine. So um, especially with, with Pelu, uh, she is completely back to normal. Um, obviously her people are home now and um, all is going well. And also with our um, immigration and residency renewal, all that went fine. Um, so it's just another reminder that uh, everything's gonna work out. In conclusion, um, looking back at this house sit, I would say uh, we're just very happy to have had uh, the extra time with Beanie and Pelu as we were with them, uh, including this house sit number seven. We were with them for a total of 13 weeks. So they became more than temporary house sit pets. Uh, they definitely became like family and uh, Wyapam became like a home. Um, we really connected with a lot of people in the village and we really, really enjoyed our time there. I know I just keep saying that over and over, but um, it, it was a good place for us to be and to experience um, what village life in Oaxaca is like. Uh, it's a memory that we're never going to forget and I honestly believe that um, we're going to maintain some sort of connection um, with the area and with the people there. Um, it was also really good. I think um, the best part of this experience with House Sit 7 and with my next video, which is House Sit 8, um, these are the, the first two house sits where we were invited back. Um, so we're happy to get that validation that the hosts felt that we did a good enough job that we could come back, that they trust us in their home with their pets, and um, that they, after having came back, um, determined that their pets were comfortable and happy enough with us for us to come back and sit for them again. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, I'm, I'm working towards getting more videos coming out on a semi-regular basis. Um, upcoming videos will be about house sit number eight, our short trip on the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, and um, we have some more exciting news coming up for what is on the horizon in 2023. So we'll see you in the next video.